Okay. Okay. So welcome everyone. I'm Christine Weber. I am here with Kixie Hawk. Um, she's going to be talking, we're going to be talking a little bit about her work. Um, thank you for joining us. So welcome Kixie. It's nice to have you here. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to the inaugural <laughs> Of the interview. Yeah. So, um, so first thing I want to ask you is you, I know that you specialize in working with um, yoga for recovery. So can you tell us a little bit about your work? Absolutely. Yeah. I, uh, not, not for the last uh, 18 months, but, uh, or 15 mm -hmm. months, but I've been teaching in treatment centers and at the jail. Um, and I had also been a leader of Y12SR, which is a, a meeting followed by a yoga practice for mm -hmm. all, all addictions mm -hmm. or people who are associated with people who, uh, or who are suffering from addiction, which another conversation for another time, but can open up to a whole addictive process in and of itself when you live with someone who has addiction of any kind. And um, I bring a kind of a trauma-informed, somatically-based uh, yoga practice that uh, isn't like the, um, I don't know, gym yogas. I'm, uh, not, I don't like to be negative. <laughs> and it is not, it, I use the healing practice of yoga, not the athletic or exercise form of yoga. Which is such a good way to describe it. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's I think it's appropriate too. I mean, I'm always making that distinction for people. And when I was working in a treatment center a couple of years ago, um, the women, the young women, would introduce the new women who were coming into the program uh, to the yoga session, and they would say, "No, it's not that. It's not that." Because they would go, "Oh, I don't want to do yoga," and they'd say, "No, it's not that. This is yoga therapy." Like they were very clear about the distinction because I had done that psychoeducational piece. So I, I think it's a really important distinction, don't you? Yeah, talk about this, that using the healing technology of yoga versus the exercise. The exercise, I exercise, that's my different practice. My yoga practice is uh, more introspective, more invitational. And that's what I offer to my students. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so can you tell us a little bit about, um, first of all, I'd love to hear about your own journey with yoga a little bit. And then if you have any students you want to talk about and how they're benefiting. Yes. Uh, I look up because like, oh my God, there's so many. It, there really is a, I've been doing this for a little over 10 years. I have students who've gone on to become yoga teachers. I've got yoga students who had started in jail, moved to my Y12SR meetings, and then even have become private clients. Um, I don't teach a lot of public classes anymore. Uh, I teach mainly one-on-one -on -one or uh, classes that are, I, I know I'm barred from using the term therapeutic because I am not uh, IAYT certified. Therefore, I can't use the T word, but it's more in that uh, in that kind of setting or with that kind of intention. I talk about yoga as a way of befriending your body, this body that had been, um, particularly if you're in active addiction of any kind, whether it's smoking, uh, alcohol, food, gambling, you're shutting down your uh, relationship with your body. You're just turning it off to in satisfaction of the furtherance of whatever your addictive process is. So yoga is a way to befriend your body, reconnect with your body, to heal your nervous system and get that whole thing back online. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk a little bit about your personal experience? Uh, sure. Um, <laughs> I just read an article about not finding yoga. Like everyone's, oh, I found yoga when I was whatever. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I was intrigued with the concept of yoga uh, mm -hmm. uh, in my, in, I'm also a recovering addict and alcoholic and codependent and, and dot, dot, dot. Uh, um, and in my about 17th year of recovery, I had changed my focus to the more uh, societally acceptable uh, addiction of work. And so I was just that motor that runs over all of your own uh, inclinations for self-healing was revving at the highest. 
and I was becoming completely depleted. I was intrigued with yoga because yoga has no goal because my engine was running, run faster, lift more, do more classes, lose more weight, do more work at work, get more achievement, you know, what all more was all out there. And yoga is decidedly a practice of not more. You know, every practice is enough. So I found uh, when I was driving home, I saw a little sign that said yoga in the window of a nutrition shop. And I had made a bet that if that light was lit, I would stop. It was lit. I stopped on my way home from work and I went in there and in a tiny room, no bigger than my office here, um, there were three students and a teacher and it was dim and she was spoke in a quiet voice. And what, whatever shape that we made that resembled what she was offering was perfect. Mm -hmm. And I burst into tears. You know, That's beautiful. Was, yeah. She was the first person who I've had different yoga teachers over the years, but she was my first yoga teacher. And she was the one who embodied what I love best about yoga, mm -hmm. which is to be the shape that you're in. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's so beautiful. And um, do you want to tell us about uh, maybe one of your favorite uh, stories about a student who um, who came to came to you? And well, I'm going to tell an indelicate story about the power of breath. Okay. Um, I know. <laughs> I can't wait for this one. <laughs> I had been going out to jail, and there was a. Uh, I always find what I call my my ambassador. So there will be someone who will be an ambassador who kind of bring other people along to practice and set the stage, like you were saying, for what they could expect. Well, this was kind of a body woman who was very enthusiastic and kind of a take charge kind of woman. And she would come with me to the trailer where we had the classes and help me move the tables and move the chairs so that we could have a space. Mm -hmm. um, and so one day I went out there, she wasn't available. So I'm moving all the chairs and tables and she uh, out of the way and she comes running in and uh, she says, they're all gonna be late. And I said, okay, that'll be all right. We've got time. She said, no, they're all fighting. And I said, well, what's going on? They had changed the size of the cookies in the commissary. They were now much smaller. And this was causing everybody a meltdown. And she said, they're all fighting in the hallways over the cookies. And I told them, just effing breathe. Like, that was like, wow. She got that breath would be a way to intercede between uh, an unproductive way of expressing emotions and getting back into your body. Right. And I just thought, wow. Just F and breathe. So that's, you know, that's my next t-shirt. Just F and breathe. <laughs> that's a great one. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so, so one other thing I wanted to make sure we talked about today um, in this short interview is if you wanted to share a little bit about why you joined the Subtle Yoga Resilience Society and how it's been helpful for you for, you know, yourself or your work. Uh, both. <laughs> Um, and because this has been kind of a, a, an interesting time and the, the Subtle Yoga Society, Resist, Resilient Society came to be right at the beginning when there was all that madness and it was just a beautiful interception like just F and breathe, but it was just for me. So at first I just used this for me to help fill up my reservoir. And of course, I've learned quite a bit over the course. And of course, it trickles into my teaching. And I've, I've kept most of my um, private clients. And some of them I see a couple times a week. And the, uh, for one person, the, uh, the subtle yoga practices are, are practiced each time that we meet. She's been recovering from... Um, brain cancer. So she just yeah. stopped her uh, uh, chemo when the lockdown started. Mm -hmm. And she just is, you know, balance, breath, 
uh, achiness, all of these things have been just troubling her uh, for this whole year. And being able to offer, after I practice them myself, these authentic movements of slow titration of the, of the breath practice, slow titration of the movements, slow titration of the balance. It's given me a, a larger pool of uh, practices to draw from. Okay. And she's truly benefited from them. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just yeah. when are we going to do this again? This is mm -hmm. her response. And then mm -hmm. an, a, another uh, student has been, is very into um, finding out how his emotions and body are connected. And these practices have given him another a way to view that. Nice. View. That's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I feel mm -hmm. it in my body? Can it give me a clue as to what's going to happen next? Mm -hmm. And then using that for self-regulation and not to mention impulse control, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is a big issue for folks who are struggling with addiction. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. that's the, because even in recovery, our impulse, uh, shall I say, our impulse awareness may falter from time to time. Yes. <laughs> so, so having another tool to be able to, to take a pause, take a mm -hmm. breath, um, and integrate the sensations before we need to take action. Right, right, for sure. So, um, and, and then in thinking about that too, impulse, uh, the impulse control, um, you know, I, I'm also thinking about this, the, the fact that in early recovery, oftentimes folks um, will be so dissociated that it's it's so easy to relapse because you not even there's not even an awareness of the either the behavior or the substance that it's that you're even engaged in. like there's not even an awareness that you're engaging in it and to to be able to use the practices to develop interoception and awareness is great but also to be able to see when you're starting to dissociate and and prevent that from happening uh that's something that you know folks with trauma often dissociate, and and um, the way that you get out of it is you have to bring the front brain online so that you can you know so that that can be that habit can be in, you know intervened with, and um, I I I would never suggest that yoga is going to stop people from dissociating, but. Uh, it, at least it's it's an awareness, a skill building that can be used complementary with whatever kind of mental health therapy that they're doing. Absolutely. And some people can't, are not yet able to access the finer sensations. So you start with the gross motor and right. just knowing where you're, you know, are your arms parallel to the floor? Yes, Am it's I, huge. Is it my right leg? You know, look down at your foot. Is this my right foot? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. take a moment and then say okay now we're going to use the other right foot just to right. some laughter which is a breath practice that helps put in the clutch and you can become more present again rather than than going off into the oh my god i made a mistake it's like oh gosh everybody makes a mistake right right of course of course so um so one other question and then we'll wrap it up for today um uh, are you feeling optimistic about teaching yoga um, right now, like in this time of COVID at the end of COVID? How are you feeling about, about your teaching? That, that's interesting. I have some concerns about stepping back into a treatment center, partly because, you know, it's like the box of chocolates. You don't know what you're going to get. The rooms are very small. The, uh, the, you know, ventilation is is iffy, et cetera. So I'm I'm not really certain about that. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely resuming my work with the Recovery Cafe San Jose. Um, in, in June, I'll be stepping back into an, a more active role with them. They'll be meeting uh, in the facility, you know, at the church uh, starting June or yeah, mm -hmm. next month. And, uh, but uh, I don't know that I'm gonna step back into a studio. 
Right, right. It's a very changeable time. We don't know what's happening. So I just wanted to hear your opinion yeah. on that. So we should wrap up, but please yes. tell everybody how can they reach you. And I'll put this in the description too. What's the best way to find out more about your work and your books? We didn't even talk about your books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yogarecovery.com. Okay. Yogarecovery.com. And I've got That's my great. books there, Yoga and the 12 Step Path and Yoga Tools for Recovery. All of that's on my website. And uh, okay. so if you're interested, you could check there. So yogarecovery.com. So th I want to thank you for being here today. And thank if you're you. here and if you watched us today, if you could leave a comment, we uh, we will get to those comments. And I, I'll leave some information about how to reach Kixi. Thank you. It's been really fun chatting with you. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, take care. Bye. Okay, I think I just stopped it and let me stop the recording.